Hello everybody and welcome to the 11th Practical Flask tutorial video. In this video we're going to be talking about user logins. Now this is actually a pretty large topic. It would take a really long video to do it in once. It's going to be quite a few videos or at least a handful of them because the topic is pretty large. So we have to, in the um, in the topic of user logins, you have quite a few you know, subtopics. So you've got forms, so HTML forms, submitting forms. So now we're going to be talking about posting data to the server. Then we've got you know the, grabbing that post data, so getting the data that was posted. We've got that. Then we've got the this notion of usernames and passwords. So we're taking a username and password. We need to store them somewhere. So now we've got to incorporate databases. And because it's a username and a password, which is kind of sensitive information, now we've got to talk about encryption. So uh, it's obviously a, a pretty big uh, issue. And then not only that, <laughs> after all of that, we also have to talk about uh, injection. So because we're using a database, we have to talk about SQL injection and uh, other things that people might use to either hack into your website uh, and do something, you know, steal some user information or to be just malicious and uh, a commit some vandalism against your website as well through SQL injection. So anyways, it's a huge topic. So let's go ahead and uh, dive into it. So here is our website at the moment. We were just testing these flashes and all of that. Everything's looking good up to this point. Now on the actual home page, we have this pop-up login screen and that's fine. We'll, we'll be using that in a little bit uh, and then also the sign up screen as well. And you'll notice that this form is a little different than this form and there's a reason for that I'm going to show you there's you know many ways to create forms and validate forms and all of this and so I'm going to show you both ways using this I just so happened to test both ways myself and then I left it I didn't feel like changing it uh, I do like this method better because the form the actual forms look more attractive because I'm using the bootstrap code as opposed to these forms here but you can incorporate the bootstrap code around these as well so anyway Moving along, we're not going to touch these yet, so we're going to talk about just the login page. Now, there actually is no login page at the moment. It's returning a. It's interesting. It gave me an internal server error rather than the 404. Anyway, uh, this is what it is. There, the 404 as in the page just doesn't actually exist yet. So that's what we're going to do now. Is we're going to build this login page. So coming over here, first we're going to go ahead and need a login template. Now, our, our most basic template actually is either the 500 error or the 404 error. So we're just going to duplicate that template. So we're going to duplicate, come over here, and we're going to rename it login.html. That's fine. You may have to enter your password again. Uh, and then now you should have a login.html here. So we'll bring that up. And this is our login.html. Let me scroll it in a little bit. Um, and so now it's a 404 page, but now we can convert it to any other page that we want just by doing this. <laughs> awesome. Now it's a login page. Okay, so now we have to actually build this login page. So because it extends header.html, and in fact, uh, I think our 400 error is a... Oh, no, we do have block body. Okay, I guess I just deleted it by accident. We'll leave the block body stuff there. Okay, so now it's a, a login page, but it has nothing there. Uh, the other thing that we need to do is we need to go back to our init.py file, open that up. Let me make the font a little bigger real quick. And what we want to do here is uh, actually add the page itself. So we can basically copy any page that already exists. Uh, we'll take the home page, copy that, come down here, paste. And instead of just slash, it's slash login slash. Change the function to be login page. And then the template we want to render is login.html. So uh, now what we want to do is we'll save that. And for now, we're not going to really mess with anything. Actually, we're going to add one more thing real quick to this page, and that's going to be methods. So methods equal, and then it's a list. And we're going to have two things in this list. You've got get and post. OK, so get and post are uh, requests. So if you recall from maybe URL lib 2, for example, or URL lib, we're in Python 3 now. Uh, if you recall from that, you might do uh, a get request. Uh, so that's getting stuff from the server. You might do a post request. That's putting stuff on the server. 
Now, I'm not a web development expert by any means, but I've been in web development for a decent amount of time. I've been dealing with requests for a decent amount of time. And up until only very recently did I've learned that there's actually another form of uh, a request, and it's a delete request. Uh, every website API that I've ever used uses either get or post. You post a delete query or a delete command or whatever. Uh, but there's actually a delete method or a delete request method. I had no idea that that existed, but it's a real thing. Interesting. Maybe someone else's mind is blown. Anyway, I was reading uh, uh, API information for a Bitcoin exchange, and they used a delete method. And I was like, where's the information on delete? And I was like, oh, that's actual request method. It's incredible. Anyway, uh, no one ever talks about it. So login methods get post cool. So you have to add methods get post because naturally by default Flask does not allow get and post. So for example, if we are to go to our dashboard page on our website and let's add a quick request. So you've got to add a, like a, a a post for example, you can use the question mark symbol and you do the question mark and a variable. So we'll just say variable variable equals uh, this hit enter and uh, we're, we're not it's actually not going to do anything because we're not asking for it but then you could also say um, and another equals another okay and these are posts but I guess uh, it's just letting it pass through just simply because we're not actually doing anything with them but in a second you'll see at least with the submit that you actually really can't it's gonna yell at you uh, anyway that's basically how you would do a get or a post uh, via the link or via the URL but anyway we're gonna do it via form so you have to add in methods get and post otherwise it won't do it get and post is it's not it's not like it's a security risk but it is one more uh, hole so to speak so it's kinda like ports right when you have open ports the more you know, open ports you have, they're just open ports. They might be secured, but they might not be. There might be other issues. So if you have a website and there's no get and post, it's a lot harder for someone to get into a website uh, as opposed to a website that allows get and post. Uh, it, it'll be a little easier, but it, it has really less to do with get and post and more to do with how you handle the get and post. Um, but anyway, uh, by default, there will be no get and post. Uh, so you have to add that in, and I'll show you the error later uh, if I remember to. Uh, what happens when you don't have get and post. So we're going to come back over to our HTML page and we're going to build the form. I think we're all done with the login page though. So we'll close that, come over here, and let's do a quick service Apache 2 restart. And that should be the last restart that we have to actually issue. Um, here we are. Let's refresh real quick, and then now let's click on login. Sure enough, we have the, the page there. There's nothing there, but we have it. So now we are going to open up this and uh, fill in our body now. So within our actual body, what we're going to do is we're going to add uh, a body tag, and then we're going to fill in a quick form. So we're going to put in a div tag. So we're going to have... Oops, div class equals, and this is going to be a container div, um, so that's uh, bootstrap code, slash div. Divs are not bootstrap, just for the record, they're just div tags that's used all over the place, but the class equals container, the container part is what is uh, more bootstrap, and then you've got container fluid as well that you'll see us use both of. Moving right along, we're going to add a quick break so we've got some space between this and the top. Then we're going to have some header for text. Whoops. And this is just going to say, you know, please log in colon. And then once we have that, we're going to add one more break and then we will begin our form. So we've got form, form. As Python folk, you're probably having a hard time with all the spaces, but or the you know tabbing stuff over. So let's go ahead and make ours a little more better. So we'll tab that over. So you know that this block of code is contained within this div here, and rather this block of code, and then the stuff in the form will be tabbed over as well. But first, form. Uh, it's not. We don't really need. We'll just have action equals nothing for now. Class equals a form dash in line and then the method of this form is going to be post okay 
So the reason why the variables in the URL didn't really do anything, it didn't yell at us, is because we didn't actually specify the method. So it basically, it's not going to throw an error, but now we've explicitly said, hey, we want this to post. So when we hit sub the submit button, it's going to run a post uh, request, and that's going to uh, fail because we didn't allow it. Or Well, now we're allowing it, but I'll show you what will happen when we're not allowing it. So that's our form form cool uh, method post. That's fine. Now we need to add some input. So we've got input, and then we've got type. And the type of input here is going to be text. So this is going to be where the user is allowed to enter their username. So text, we've got class here is going to be form control. And then the placeholder, this is just stuff that's like within um, the, like the box previous to when someone actually types. Placeholder will be equal to username. Um, let me do this here. Move this over. Cool. Okay. Placeholder will be username. The name of this field. This is basically how you can reference this field. The name of the field will literally be uh, username. And then the value of this field is going to be a, um, a variable for now, but that variable is going to be request.form.username. So this will be our way of kind of passing this data back to Python. And that's it for this. Now we're gonna basically do the exact same thing again, only this time it's going to be a password. So we'll take this form here, copy that, come down here, paste, placeholder, let's see, text, input type. Uh, this input type needs to be password because it, we want it to make little stars instead of the actual text as people type it in. Placeholder will be, um, let's capitalize password and let's go ahead and capitalize username from above as well. Password, the name here is password. And then the variable that we're gonna assign this to is gonna be just request.form.password, okay? Then finally, uh, so those are the fields. Now we need the submit button. So we have one more input, and that's going to be class equals, and this is going to be some uh, bootstrap code here. So class btn space btn dash default. That's for the default button of uh, bootstrap. The type. So what is this button? It's a submit button. And then value. This is what does the button actually say? And that's going to be, actually we'll call it login. And that's it. Uh, that's our the end of our form. So we can save that form now. And I guess I didn't really see it update, but I'm sure it did. Refresh. Sure enough, there is our form. Please log in. Username, password. We can type in our username as uh, Harrison. And then we could say our password is uh, hi there, like that. We can hit log in. It did do something. Uh, you saw it load, hopefully. We can do it again. It's doing stuff, but then we're not actually handling anything. It is submitting data, but it's not being handled. Now, as promised, uh, let us show you, or let, I guess we closed it already, uh, what would happen instead, though, if we come down and we did not allow these methods. So what if we just had login? Let's, whoops, I mean to click on that. I click on that link all the time. Uh, refresh. It's restarted. Now we click login and you get this method not allowed. So you may or may not want to have an error page that handles this method not allowed error as well, but we'll worry about that later. Um, and just for the record, that's a 405. Um, so you can make a pretty thing like error handler. Um, you might be able to even get away with this. Let's try it. And it's going to handle the 405 page not found. Uh, we'll just say this is method. Method not found. Save. Refresh that. Refresh the login. We'll resubmit the data. Yeah, cool. So if you wanted to handle it, that's how you could handle it. And in fact, um, I hate to leave it like a mess like this, so we'll just throw in 405 there. Uh, save that. We're going to come over to our templates. Let us duplicate 404. Make that a 405.html. Edit this. That method. Let's do that. Requ 
request method is not permitted on this page. Something like that. Cool, we'll come over here, restart that, come on over to this, and then confirm form resubmission, yeah. And then we get, yeah, that request method is not permitted on this page. So that's a little uh, better way to handle that error anyways. Okay, so uh, we've got our form at least. Let's go back to that form. We've got our form here. We've got some information. We are able to, well, actually, let me uh, go ahead. Let's add back those methods before I forget. Uh, methods equals uh, get, actually, it needs to be get post. Save, oops, save that. Fresh. Let's just make sure before we leave this one that uh, we did this right. So we've got our form, we've got our passwords that we can enter, but we're not actually handling them. So we've got what we need to at least get started with, uh, but now we've got to handle the actual get and post, do maybe some simple validation via no database, let's say, just allow the user to log in somehow. Uh, so I can show you how we are, we'll use the information that's input via Flask and how we're actually passing that information back. That's probably what we'll do in the next video. Uh, then pretty quickly we're actually gonna have to cover registration first because I don't really see much point in going too much further in the login because eventually we have to actually validate the login credentials against the database of usernames and passwords to get a database of usernames and passwords we kinda need a registration uh, so we can set that up and then we'll come back to actually validating the login so lots of stuff to cover with logins it's a confusing confusing topic lots of people get it wrong uh, and times change. So anyway, uh, it's a it's a challenging topic, but it's an interesting topic at the same time. So anyways, stay tuned for that. We'll be covering uh, more on dealing with get and post uh, requests, then registration and all that, and validation, encryption, and all that fun stuff. So stay tuned for those. If you guys have any questions or comments on this video, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.